I am Nick Shell. I am the living legend of hair loss. I am your hairy godfather. Now let's get to work. I had mind control over you just then. Because you're not used to people being in your face. Anyone heard of the rule of thirds? It'd probably be more like this. But Nick Shell is a rebel. He doesn't care about the rule of thirds because it's more confrontational. It's more in your face. If I break the rules because I'm a rebel. So I made a video called, what is it called? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Most popular hair loss YouTube channels Hairliciously. So by the way, Hairliciously is a much more popular YouTuber than me. He has a lot more subscribers than me. But he watches my channel and leaves comments. I think it's the coolest thing. So I made a video about that. And our good friend Andrew Moss, who's been following my videos for a long time, very grateful for his presence, left me this comment. And I definitely want to explore this. Here we go. Andrew Moss, quote, you'll get 25,000 subscribers one day. Because right now I'm about at 7,000 you'll get 25,000 one day. At your high school reunion, I do hope you can interview a few of your ex-classmates about hair loss if they're willing to and find out their experiences. It'll be interesting to know how many of them are slap heads now and how many still have Norwood zeros." End quote. So let's, let's talk about that. Um, thank you for the compliment, by the way, about the 25,000 subscribers. But with all due respect, I would never, <laughs> I would never do this. I would never go to my 20th high school reunion coming up in July, take my camera and my tripod and look at all the guys and say, hey, come over to the corner here. Hey, let's, let's shoot a video. I've got a YouTube channel. It makes me thousands of dollars a year. Um, would you mind helping me make more money um, and doing an interview because you're, you know, you're have no hair on top now, even though I do, but you don't. But wouldn't that you don't mind being in a video of me asking you questions about you losing all your hair, right? That's cool, right? Nor would I be interested in going up to guys who have zero hair loss and saying saying the same thing. Because ultimately one of my new uh catchphrases of twenty nineteen is this that emotionally intelligent beta males are the new alpha male. I strongly believe that. And part of what makes me efficient as a human being, as a friend, as a likable guy in the real world, is that I am fun to be around. That I don't seem like I'm trying to take advantage of people. Now granted, you know, when people are in my videos, it's because they want to be, but I never want that person to feel exploited for whatever they're talking about. That's very important to me. But I feel that the moment I start interviewing balding guys, so the main thing I wouldn't do is because I don't want to, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be going to the 20th, you know, reunion, high school reunion uh, for the sake of, I genuinely care about these people I grew up with. I've known some of them since preschool, since 1985 is when I started preschool. And I've known them since then, some of them. And so I don't want to interrupt that fellowship time to uh, instill a way to do that. We're, we're going to have fun instead, you know. But even then, I... Do you see how, like, I'd be pretty much an a-hole if I did that? If I, if I interview guys about them balding, I just have zero interest uh, in doing that. Now, apparently Bald, Ca Bald Cafe, a YouTuber, he does more of that. That's more of his thing, interviewing bald guys. But for me, it's a matter of, in reality, and I know all I talk about on this channel is, is balding and all this stuff, but in reality, I promise you the first thing I see when I look at another man is never how much hair he has. I don't care about that. I'm judging other men on completely different levels. I'm actually looking at their levels of confidence, their levels of emotional intelligence, their levels of kindness. I'm looking at all around. If I'm judging them, that's how I'm judging them. But as far as the hair, the hair to me has nothing to do with anything that actually matters in my personal value system. So. That's so to reduce someone to their hair loss, it's just not of my. I really think it would be again an a hole kind of thing to do for me to, to do that. But if you're into that sort of thing, Bald Cafe, I think, does more of that. But even aside from that, I'm just not interested in interviewing bald guys, I think it's ultimately irrelevant. I think 
because it would be reducing them to that. Okay, I will put a, put an ad out and, and, and advertise that you want to interview bald guys. But see, I don't want to do that. I don't. There's nothing for me to learn from bald guys that I don't already know. Everything I talk about uh, separating your identity and confidence levels from your hair and from that certain traditional Hollywood sense of what it means to be masculine, nothing a bald guy would say would teach me anything new. What I already teach on this channel is already relevant enough. Because ultimately, here, I can already tell you what to say. Some of the guys that would be bald would say, you know what, yeah, Nick, I wish I had as much hair as you. You're lucky, man. Uh, yep, yeah, this sucks. I, I hate being bald. I wish I wasn't bald. I mean, do, why would you want to watch a guy say that? Or why would you want to hear another guy say, yep, I went bald at 25. Uh, what about it? See, because to that guy that, that already embraced it, he, he wouldn't care. It just, for me, I'm not in a place where, that's probably what it is. It's probably that I just simply don't care about the concept. I already know what's going to happen. I already know that a lot of guys will look like me. I know a lot of guys will have no hair and a lot of guys will have more hair. But I can tell you this, in my mind, I'm going there because I genuinely want to be around these people, not because I'm judging them. Now I understand like this TV version of what people do at their high school reunions is they're, you know, they're secretly looking at the high school quarterback. Oh look, he got bald and fat and he's been divorced. Ah, look at him, his life. See, I mean, well, speaking of, that's another thing too. It just makes me think of, hey, you went bald. Let me let me do a video of you. That's almost like me saying, hey, yeah, you got divorced. You you're married how long? You only met five years. Okay, yeah. Well, let me interview you because I've been married ten and a half. So, uh, yeah, let's let's do it. Like to me, <laughs> it just it would be a very miserable experience. But I just don't think that the even if I did arrange all that, I think it would there would be nothing to gain from that. I think what we're gaining. I'm already sharing uh, with this whole concept. I think, again, just go to Bald Cafe. He will give you that experience that we're looking for as, as bald guys. I, I honestly don't really care what bald guys my age have to say because I know what guys my age are experiencing. We're such in a different universe right now. I know this is hard to relate, but for us, we're now thinking our life is halfway over. And we have to be able to provide our own retirement because Social Security is not going to be there for us. We've got to be able to make it to where our kids can afford college. We've got, we got to make sure that our careers it's our, themselves are doing well. We have to make sure that our relationship with our wife and our kids is good. We, Man, and look, I'm getting a dad bod now. I really, so we've got so much stuff that we're focused on that guys my age... If they, I'll put it this way, if guys my age, 37, 38, are able to give much time, energy, and money to the concept of hair loss, then they've probably got a pretty good life. They've got nothing else to worry about. They are so financially set that they don't have to worry about how to pay, afford for the second half of their life. They don't have to worry about maintaining strong relationship with their, with their wife and their children. And maintaining their own health and all of these things we have for a guy my age to not have to worry about any of that and therefore the thing he is worried about is his hair i'd say that's a pretty lucky guy i guess because he'd have no it goes back to maslow's hierarchy of needs pyramid is that when you have nothing you only want basic things but the higher you get on the pyramid the more things you have the more time, energy, and effort you have to focus on those things that never mattered before. Back when you were just simply worried about how am I gonna have food to eat? There's lots of people in the world that worry about that. If you're watching one of my videos, you're probably not one of those people that's worried where you're gonna get food or water from. And for me, it's like that. If you're my age and you're still worried about hair or have given much thought, other than being Nick Shell and making thousands of dollars off the topic, then it's just irrelevant. So for those, all of those many reasons, that's why I won't be filming, but again, I would refer you to Bald Cafe. So I think that's more. People have asked me before if I will interview bald guys. I will not interview bald guys. 
and I can't ever imagine, even if it were one of my best friends, say, hey, best friend, we're totally cool. You want to be in a video so I can reduce you to, to something as natural as hair loss? Think of what a jerk I would be having the hair I still have at my age if I interviewed bald guys my age. But most importantly, I don't see hair when I see other guys. I feel that I'm not a judgmental person. I definitely don't want to be. Because if I'm a judgmental person, I'm reducing people to all these things. It means that I'm not secure in myself. Confident people don't need to judge other people. Because ultimately when they do that, they are competing with each other. It's the same old thing that people do on Facebook. They're having a better time than I am. Their life is better than mine. Insecure people who don't have strong identities do that. And Nick Shell has a very strong identity, a very good sense of who I am. And not because I think I'm better than anyone. In fact, I think I'm worse than many people in many ways. So if I'm going to assess another man, it's going to be his confidence, his emotional intelligence, and let's face it, his ability to make money because maybe there's something for me to learn from that. You know, actually what I should do, I should do an update for 2019 to remind everybody that watches my videos how I actually make living, like I make a living for my money aside from my side hustles. So this is just the space I'm in right now and that's what I feel like doing. So I'll do that after this video. Comments belong right here.